before this week, I had planned to do something more formal, but due to trying to catch up somewhat um, after KimuraCon, I'm recording this the weekend after KimuraCon. I figured to do something more vlog style. I'm kind of motivated, actually, somewhat by um, a couple things going to KimuraCon in general and also going to also reading Eddie Kingston's uh, really good article that he did about um, dealing with depression and. Talk a bit not about depression. Um, I may experience that. I may have that. Um, but it was related to my autism, and I haven't really like I've brought up a bunch in the past the fact that I have autism on this channel. Um, or in the con and also on my blog as well, in the context of talking about things. Um, talking about like oh. Here is, how perceive, here is how I'm perceiving of a thing in regards to my autism. Uh, here is how that sort of thing. And like, this gets into the disability mod, um, various models of presenting disabilities and all this, that, and the other thing. But I've really talked about like, okay, what, what does it mean to be me with autism? And I, I phrase it that way in particular because there is an expression in the um, autistic self-advocacy community and disability community, which is a, a valid one, which is a good expression, and I bear as repeating, which is why I'm repeating it. If you've met a person with autism, you've met a person with autism. Autism is on a spectrum. Um, and the experiences of two different people with autism, or even any five different people with autism, can be very significantly different. And even in terms of interactions, where a person falls on a spectrum, like where a person falls on the spectrum as an individual that can actually to a certain degree vary from day to day. I have days where I, I have really good days where I can just walk out and be amongst the world and pass as a for normal person without any significant issues. And sometimes I have days where I shut down, where I get anxiety attacks and stressed out and all of a sudden, and run into various issues in some cases where I even consider certain form like actually before I get further in this asterisk warning I will there will be discussion of self-harm and various other things here um days where I couldn't have considered at various points certain degrees of self-harm not cutting or anything like that but other stuff um I don't want, don't want to get too much into that, but um, that part at the moment, but that, that, that is a thing that I've experienced in the past. And with life being an experience, with life experience, I've had come to be able to handle some social situations better than others, in a large part because social interaction is like social skills are a language skill. I, I describe them, my experience, as a lang like like a language skill, like learning Spanish or Japanese or something like that. They're a skill that you learn and that for la to put it in a couple in a few ways, it's a skill that can entropy. If, like, I had a moderate Spanish vocabulary when I came out of high school, I haven't engaged in Spanish as much as I used to. And so I don't know if I'd be able to be able to navigate a Spanish situation in the same way that I could. Well, now, the same way that I could uh, in terms of verbally. Boy, I'm dating myself here, like um, 16 years ago, for example. Um, or, yeah, 16, even, um, God, 35, <laughs> or even like uh, 17 years ago, like when I was, my when I was a senior in high school, um, I'm taking Spanish every year. So there's that. 
on a similar situation. Um, so like, this is actually to a degree my concern when lockdown happened. Like there were all the jokes that we made about nerds and otaku and that sort of thing of ah you like ah this is this I've trained all our lives for this moment. Um, you merely you only adopted the the. the Darkness, Bruce Wayne. I was born into it. That sort of thing. I'll bust out all the Bane voice and that sort of nonsense. Um, but that, but for all the joking about that, like while I'm not one of those type A personalities, super outgoing and out there people who need to be in social situations or to thrive, and I draw energy from those. And when I don't have that, I feed off those situations. When I don't have that, I suffer. I'm not like that, but I did have worries like, Hey, too long without social interaction, like outside of my family. Um, am I going to suffer? Uh, like as like, not just in terms of like general psychological suffering, not just in terms of gaining weight and that sort of thing for being, um, indoors all the time but am i am my social skills going to suffer um is the moments where i go out and talk to people am i going to not do as well at stuff that i used to do well at before like going to a restaurant and ordering food going to get movie tickets um that sort of having conversations with people in an environment how how are those going to handle how am i going to handle those and like Kaboracon, to an extent, was a big test of that for me because that is, um, like, while my friends that I normally meet at Kaboracon weren't, I didn't have any guarantee they're necessarily going to be there. Um, but on the other hand, there, I'm in a place with a whole bunch of people where we share a common interest and we can chat, and I. I was going, okay, am I going to be able to do this with my D&D games? Um, my in-person D&D game that I was in, that was one of my ways to keep that skill primed, um, that was put on indefinite hold. And I've actually lost track of contact with a lot of the people who were in that game. Um, when lockdown happened, I've got a Zoom game now, which helps with that but it's i don't have that in-person interaction anymore and the ability to read certain degrees of body language that i would have had irl and so like that that's a worry for me and again i, I spent the circuit bears repeating the experience of a person with autism um in terms of like like my experiences are going to be very different because i'm i'm autistic but i'm also white i'm a dude like both in the terms of gender identity and all well, 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 like in terms of gender identity, I'm a dude and I was born out and I identify with the gender that I was born as. And, and you know, I'm white, I'm a white guy. My experiences are going to be radically different from a person than a black person with autism, a woman with autism. Um, and even other people on the LGBT side of things, and even among the people of that group, they are going to have very different each of each of those different letters on the side of the um, in in that spectrum are going to have different um, are going to have different experiences with regards to their autism and also with their sex with their uh, gender identity and sex and uh, sexual identity. Um, women like are significantly underdiagnosed with autism um, for a variety of reasons um, regarding related to biases among um, the psychiatric and psych, um, psychiatric field and also in terms of skill of so of expectations of picking up social skills and to a certain degree rein, um, reinforcement of particular social cues and that sort of thing that are 
push that are pressed on women, the pressed on women in society, uh, or pushed on the women in, in society. And similar, and similarly, it's going to be also be different for uh, people of color, um, both due to the necessity. From what I understand, this is me going from secondhand information from conversation from for example the uncomfortable conversations with a black man um video series which the host of that is not to my knowledge on spectrum but it covers and that stuff and that's related to this also discussion of code switch uh, of code switching uh also um from picking stuff up with podcasts by austin walker who is on spectrum um and discussion that he's talked about being on spectrum um, but like the idea of code switching and learning how to co and learning that changes thing like may also change the dynamic in terms of getting diagnosed as autism, uh, in terms of like that, because it's social skills are a learned skill and being on the autistic spectrum requires you like part, maybe part of that is picking up those social skills there is the additional pressure of being able to need to know how to code switch that changes up those dynamics in that respect on the first hand. And on the other second hand, um, in certain community, like in, a, in certain cases, um, like in, in my case, I, my autism diagnosis came out of the school system. Uh, it came out of, uh, observations by school counselors and my parents and leading to ultimately my parents getting the school district to basically help pay for me going up to OHS, go OHSU and getting, having extensive, not just like tests, but like extensive conversations with a psychologist who determined that, yes, I'm at the time I'm, I am, or I have what was at the time described as Asperger's syndrome and is now under the current version of the DSM is considered a autism spectrum disorder. So in that context, if you are someone who is, is has autism, but if you don't, but is not necessarily in a school district that is equipped to recognize that a person is perhaps more, towards the like that they would have had they have what would have been described as Asperger's and thus can pass to an extent then that that can cause the person to be missed to or to be misdiagnosed like oh this is saying oh they this person doesn't have autism they have um ADD now they may have now they may indeed also have ADD on top of autism, but the autism gets missed, or they have a tent, or they have um opposite um I forget what it was the I was misdiagnosed as um oppositional defiant or something like that, um a similar sort of thing, and possibly being okay you they get diagnosed with Ritalin or something like um not diagnosed but prescribed Ritalin because that's what the school psychologist determines is the easiest solution and also what the school district can manage, which is also a thing that happened, like nearly happened to me. So yeah. And so there's that. Um, the other thing I do want to talk about related regarding my experience with autism, because I haven't talked about this before. Um, and it actually relates to the past year in Portland uh, in terms of 2020 and parts of 2021. And that's with regards to the um, civil rights protests that have been happening extensively in Portland. Weirdly enough, like, I mean, we've had police shootings of black people, people of color in Portland um, before, but it's, this is like one of those weird cases for me on the outside being like, okay, the shootings happen. Like some of these big shootings, um, happened in other cities, in Atlanta, in Minneapolis, elsewhere, 
but like the Portland protests were the ones that had this level of energy to them. Um, I'm far enough out that whether I wanted to take part in the protests or not, um, I, it was not a situation where I could readily take part necessarily. Um, so I, I, I helped out in other ways, but in any case, um, and one of the ways I helped out in the case was in trying to get conversations about, um, privilege with people I know. And I, and I thought about having conversations about this well before I, I have organized in the past multiple times. Um, various degrees of support groups and social groups for people who are on spectrum. Because again, socialization is a skill that you have to keep practicing. And my the thought I had for the for these various groups that I've done, and then moved on, let them sustain themselves. But the ideas that I had with these various groups were okay, like places for conversations and for people to talk about stuff to help each other out. And occasionally with these groups in the past, we when these ubiquitous, distressingly ubiquitous shootings would happen, it, these conversations would come up and about the pro protests and about when protests turn violent and rioting occurs and that sort of thing. And we have the conversations that were being had in 2020. And when you, when you, Things on stuff like uncomfortable conversation with a black man again, bring up that YouTube video series, that video series. Um, and I, what the time when I was picking up from circles that the discussion and discourse about rioting was more, I, I was picking up enough to know that there was. I think that things were more complicated than just rioting than, than rioting bad grr, or or like it wasn't it wasn't rioting bad it's rioting really complicated and so I but I didn't have a really way to, to express that and this is probably one of the situations where me going off the cuff is kind of getting my actually in a way letting me express my autism a bit here in terms of what my autism, how my autism manifests because I, in terms of a discussion with another person, my autism, like I verbally don't debate well and I don't converse off the cuff necessarily well. It helps me to have some degree of talking points prepared for myself, even if it's not necessarily written talking points it's important for me to have planned something out in my head. And so with these discussions, one of the things I ran into is, okay, I encountered forum posts and social media posts and um, other things getting into why the conversation about, why the discussion about, for example, writing is more complicated. And... I would try to bring this up in discussion and it never really quite worked the way I wanted to because it's like, oh, well, like it was a case where having a resource to point to was important, would have been important and would have helped tremendously. And I didn't have that. And the questions that were coming up with the discussion were the questions that come up in when people you do a you do just asking questions and attempt to derail and as a bad faith method of discourse to wear down people on the side of social justice or people in the in a, people of color LGBT people um, and that sort of thing and but. I can say from interacting with these people in these environments of these autistic social groups and support groups that the questions being asked 
were in those instances and in, in those specific instances of these groups from a position of good faith. Also speaking from the, but, but also with my awareness that the people who are dealing with them enough and dismissing these questions in social media and in public and on blog posts and that sort of thing, um, the awareness that the people in those environments were being asked of them out of bad faith. And find I finding myself in a position of frust of semi frustration of these questions are important, but there's not a good resource for people with autism to have these dis to get these discussions because the other thing where tricky things comes up with autism is I I view things analytically as far as this how my autism manifests itself. And this is something that I've observed in conversations that other autism do as well. I view things analytically and I like to try to categorize things. And I like thinking of problems with the solution. It's actually why I run into problems in my head with the idea of a thing being problematic. Because in the way my head view but the way I view things are problems are things to be solved. So by describing a thing as problematic, my my brain wants to approach wants to respond to this by saying, well, then it's just bad and need to go away. And I know that that's not necessarily that that when we're describing a thing as being problematic in terms of a work of media or that sort of thing, we refer to Conan the Barbarian or H.P. Lovecraft as problematic. That it's more, that. What that actually means is there's problems with the work. There's things about the work that are offensive and crass and racist and bigoted and we and that need to be addressed and discussed. But that that doesn't necessarily mean the work needs to be we just need to yeet it into the sea and declare it uh and just declare it of having no value whatsoever. And, or to put things another way, Barack Obama has said on the record that he has enjoyed in the past and enough to, to have a, some real fond memories, Marvel uh, Conan comics, including Savage Sword of Conan by, um, which is an adaptation of Conan stories of, of the like, original Robert E. Howard stuff but by um, P. Craig Russell and Roy Thomas and all of them. So, like, but it's super problematic. Lovecraft is super problematic. But on the other hand, Lovecraft country plays in the, the mythos and uses the mythos for just conversations about um, race and race relations and uh, bigotry and um, segregation and... United States is a very, very fraught and messy and dark past in terms of race relations and racism, particularly against uh, people of color, um, up against black people. And so, consequently, it's like, well, like, so my, so my, but still, my brain goes, when I'm stressed out, my brain goes, when you say, oh, this is problematic, my brain goes, oh, this needs to go away. And I see this conversation happen as, like, these, this language used as well as a knee-jerk response for, for example, talking about sexism in gaming, uh, talking about um, glorification of colonialism in gaming, um, and that sort of thing. And... Yeah, and so the short ver the short version of that is like consequently when it gets when things get more complicated and more shades of gray, part of what my break my brain my brain goes, particularly when I'm getting I'm stressed or otherwise in rough situations, 
is it struggles to handle that. And unless I've basically like exposed, like, like sought out information that gives me the tools, the mental tools to reprocess it and go, no, this is more complicated. These call for more explanation and that sort of thing. And I eventually kind of like, I eventually kind of hit the point where I was able to do that, but I had to over, take in a lot of information to get to get to that. But you see where the autism starts to run into problems here. I have to pause for a second to deal with the thing. Um, where, as you observed after right before the pause, I was starting to ramble. Um, and that makes things trickier for longer extended conversations. Uh, regarding complicated issues where I stop having the words at hand to say the thing and stumble on how to explain the concept. And so imagine when you're when you, when you're running into those issues with autism, um, with putting the words together and struggling to find the right phrasing when you're having, you're doing that when you're having a conversation at significant length about a complicated issue and like racial inequality, like when like violence and protests as an expression of frustration and as an outlet for frustration and anger at legitimate wrongs that have gone for an extensive period of time, generations without being addressed and that sort of thing. And so like this past year, like we got the thing that I, so what, what I wanted, what I always kind of wanted through that period of time was like, Hey, can, does somebody, is there someone, anyone I can talk to about putting a resource together for people with autism or like, okay, oh, hey, here's the thing I can point to this and to explain as an explainer for lack of a better term of what's going on and how these ways are more complex uh, are complex for people who are on the autistic spectrum. And then this past year, we got in comfortable conversations with a black man, which was not a thing that was deliberately meant for people with autism, but it basically checked all the boxes for the thing I was asking for. And I like, I'm, I was almost to a degree kind of bummed I wasn't involved with those group with those past groups anymore. Um, I again I stepped away because my ultimate one of the things I've encountered um, with all these various groups is to a certain degree if if you if a person if a single person is in charge of a group for too long of organizing a social event for too long, eventually the you will get enough inertia that. Everyone just lean points to the one person and says, okay, he's handled it every time before. He'll keep handling it in the future. This is like, at least with the various autistic um, social groups I've run. And I've done this through, uh, so I've done this through high school. And like high school, even part of middle school to a degree. So like I've done it, like I've been in a weirdly organizational point for long enough. Like, okay. Um, ontological inertia is something like, and a desire for routine uh, is a, something that I have to be aware of. And I, at certain points, like, okay, if this goes for too long, if I leave, it will collapse. So I need to find somebody to hand it off to before it gets to that point. Um, which all, and yeah, it also leads to one other thing, which is, Apologies for the glare. I have a screensaver on the other monitor that I'm using to track some information. Um, otherwise, anyway, this does lead to the other point that I'm running into that comes up uh, as far as for, that I want to talk about about my when it comes to my autistic experiences, and that is related to um, routine. Is like one of the elements of the autism spectrum is 
necessity and usefulness for routine. Um, having a track record that, not track record, but a, like, where we have, where you have expectations of what, not expectations, but, and the expectation is the right term. Expectations for what's happening when. There is a certain, there's, again, there's a variable degree here in terms of how much you, how much routine you need. Um, how much chaos that you can take before you start getting overwhelmed. Um, as an example, like with one of the issues I've had in the past is when I've gone to like, re, when I've gone to undergone significant, um, breaks in routine, um, for things I've wanted to do, like going to special events and that sort of thing. I sometimes lock down and get like, um, like an upset stomach and that's something I get a nasty case of the nerves. Um, that's what that's happened to me in the past. It's happened when I've gone to like San the one time I tried to go to San Diego comic con. I, I, I actually made it to San Diego, went through a whole day there. Um, got to meet Ryan Davis, uh, at a whiskey media meetup. This was back when Ryan Davis was still with us. And then the rest of the con was like, Oh, nope. My, um, my guts have found some new and obscure knots from the, um, Boy Scout guidebook that they've decided to try out. And I am not able to function at the, uh, convention center, which was a pain in the ass. Um, metaphorically pain in the gut actually. And that prevented me from being able to really take fully take part in the convention. Um, and I had similar things that got like at cons in the past, um, in taking part in, um, various stuff when I was in uh, grade school and that sort of thing. It's been a, um, but I've like, I picked up strategies, I've picked up to develop strategies for coping with it. Um, but it's, it's a problem and like I can handle other things outside of routine fine. And but it's definitely a case of like having to pick up coping strategies for this, for handle a wider array of um, difficulties and varying levels of stress. And this is actually an awkward situation from not awkward is the wrong term, but made things tricky to a certain extent with the various forms of employment that I've had, because I've done a fair amount of help desk work and help desk has varying levels of stress and varying levels of um, volume of tickets coming your way. And while on the one hand working on computers and fixing computer stuff and uh, dealing with these problems plays in well with by strengths with approaching problems in a uh, programmatic and systematic manner and being having the analytical mindset on the other hand, it puts me in situations where I could very easily get overwhelmed. And I think over some people handle that on the autism spectrum, handle that much better than others and than I do. And some people handle it much worse. And so that's adds a degree of complexity there as well. <sighs> so that is like, I've gone, for about 30 minutes talking about my experiences with autism, uh, various, at various levels and on various points. Um, and I haven't really gone into this, like my, my experiences with autism in this way on the channel before. So this is an experiment. I realize I am really putting myself out there on this, but I think it might be something that's useful to people. Uh, to hear my experiences as an autistic person in my own words, off the cup, to use the wrestling terminology, shooting straight, if you will. Um, if you are, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, as far as for me doing further discussions in the future, um, I could probably do a couple, at least one or two more of these off, off the cuff. Um, 
but that's the big stuff off the top of my head. Like, there's probably a few other big things, but again, I've, I've gone for half an hour plus so far. So this is a good place to stop for now. If I want to get into this again, I can. Um, whenever I have a similar week, like, oh, I, <laughs> um, this week has been a mess and I only have a time to plan up and plot out a proper video necessarily. So this works for here. Uh, we'll call it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.